making the Stuart model steam plant part 59, painting the base for the Stuart double 10 V and fitting the 504 boiler to the baseboard using the clamps that I made in a previous episode. This is the base that I made to support the 10 V and as you can see it has a special arrangement of a hole in the middle, the idea being that any condensate and oil goes down the hole and along a pipe to the main drain on the baseboard. Here's the base ready to be painted with this stuff, which is black gloss paint from a company called HMG Paints. The base is sat on top of the aerosol cap from this actual can. The first thing to do with rattle cans is rattle them, so here I'm shaking the can for quite a long time so that the ball inside the can mixes the paint. And here I'm spraying the paint onto the base. This base is made from a couple of pieces of mahogany. And as you can see, in this first coat, the grain is still showing. This part is going to need quite a lot of rubbing down and repainting to make it very smooth. All I'm doing at the moment is getting some paint on it, possibly too much, but I usually do that anyway. In a day or so, once the paint's hardened, I'll rub it down with some wet or dry sandpaper and give it another coat, and then repeat the process until I'm happy with the finish. There's some background noise on the video, and it's not my fault. There are aeroplanes flying about overhead, military aircraft as well. My son-in-law, Rob, has an app for his phone that tells him what the type of aircraft is that's flying nearby. The one flying overhead as I'm making this video was a typhoon, and later on an F-15 flew over. Here's the usual gratuitous shot of the paint drying, with the can in the picture to show you what the colour is. It's time to do some more work on the baseboard. There's still a fair way to go yet, but it's not a long job. I've just not been up to rubbing this down, for two or three reasons, one being the weather's been dreadful and I need to do it outside, the other reason being that I've just had a prostate biopsy and the instructions said to take it easy for a few days. But the main reason was I overdid it, and I saturated a little bit, so I put the plant on one side for a while, this job started off just as building a simple steam plant with parts sent to me by the customer in the USA. It developed into something else, I'm not complaining, but it made things take a lot longer. At one stage he sent me four S50 steam engines, which all needed work, and I used the best of the bunch for the one that's going on the plant. And then there was the rebuilding of the Stuart 10 V and fitting reversing gear. That took a long, long time, because it did need a lot of attention. The good news though is that both the S50 steam engine and the Stuart 10 V now run very well indeed. What I'm doing at the moment is drilling some holes in the baseboard, which I'm going to thread to mount some clamps that will hold the boiler in place. Now some people will be thinking, you're going to drill holes in wood and thread the wood. Well, yes I am indeed. This seems to work, it's from the model aircraft days. I'm going to use 4BA bolts to mount the clamps. And the tapping size drill for 4BA is 1 8 of an inch. But for wood, I would always use 1 imperial size less, so you get a tighter thread. Once all the holes are threaded, and before I rub down the baseboard, I'm going to squirt a small amount of very thin cyanoacrylate or super glue into the holes. This thin super glue soaks into the wood and makes the threaded part very strong. Once the super glue is thoroughly set, I will re-thread the holes using the same 4BA tap, just to clean them up. And you will be surprised how strong a bolt in a threaded hole in a piece of wood like this actually is. I've drilled the holes all the way through the baseboard, so I do have the option to enlarge them slightly to take bolts from underneath. One of the problems with this project is, once I've built it, I have to dismantle it, because it cannot be shipped to the USA in one piece. And I also need to make it very simple and easy for the owner to reassemble the parts when they arrive. I decided on a change of plan at this stage. This is a pair of scissors, and I'm going to use this pair of scissors to cut some thermal insulation, which the boiler will sit on, on top of the wooden planking. Here's the thermal insulation, and it is not asbestos. It doesn't smell, taste, or feel like asbestos. It's made from a ceramic material. And notice how my old pair of super scissors cuts the piece of insulation. It's not quite big enough to cover the entire area, so I'll cut a couple of strips for each end. 
In the past, I've had problems with 504 boilers, whether they use spirit burners or gas burners, getting very hot and the base overheating the baseboard. On this plant, I do not want this to happen. That's why I thought I would put a layer of thermal insulation underneath the main boiler base. But unfortunately, this elevates the boiler by the thickness of the thermal insulation. I need to modify the brass clamps that are made to hold the base in position. The next sequence shows you how I did it. The first part of the job is to clean up a piece of brass bar using some wet or dry sandpaper and then, as always, I face across the front. In this episode, I'm going to show you something that I would never normally do and show you what happens if you don't use a centre drill. At this stage, I have to say you do not need to use a centre drill. There are various tricks that allow you to drill holes in the middle of things without them wobbling about. Sometimes it's quite successful to press the drill bit against the work, rotate the chuck by hand, which automatically makes a very small centre mark, then you can use a normal twist drill to drill the hole all the way through. When drilling holes in the lathe, the first thing I always do is reach for the centre drill. Centre the work and then drill it as deep as I need it to be, and in this case it's quite deep because I need to part off four brass washers. After parting off, they look like this, so I get a pair of pliers and squeeze the end then clean them up using a piece of wet or dry sandpaper. This is 400 grit, and I'm using my bench. It's flat enough for this job. After cleaning up the washers, I cleaned up the clamps because they had marking out blue on the bottom side. If I wasn't going to be dismantling this steam plant, I wouldn't be doing this. I would just fit the four washers as washers underneath the clamps to lift them up. But because I want this to be a very easy job to assemble, I'm going to solder the washers in place, that's why you see the parts as they are at the moment. I've done this many times, I'm using Friar Lux paint, which is finely ground solder mixed with flux. And as you can see here, I'm just painting some of it onto one of the washers. Followed by painting each washer in turn, and fitting the washers over the bolts, this will keep them in the middle. All I need to do now is heat up the assembly using my Proxon blowtorch as usual, preferably without setting fire to the bench. This part of the video is running at a higher speed. What you're supposed to do is just heat the part until the Fryer Lux solder melts, but for some reason I always add extra solder, and I shouldn't do this, it's incredibly stupid. Once I had a Fryer Lux joint fail, and ever since then I always add extra solder. And besides, these parts are underneath the clamps. What I'm doing here is a test assembly. I'm using a nut spinner to tighten the bolts on the first of the clamps. And here I'm repeating the process on the other clamp at the other end of the boiler. A final nip with the nut spinner, and the clamp is holding the boiler very securely in place, although I don't think this is going to be strong enough. And for that reason, I've just been on the phone to Blackgates Engineering and ordered some stainless steel Allen cap heads, and I may even use captive nuts underneath. I'll see what the cap head bolts look like. I think they'll look OK in this position. But if not, I will have to machine some stainless steel hexagon bar and thread it for BA. The fixings cannot be ordinary steel because they will rust. The boiler to the boiler plate mountings are steel, but I built a paint over the nuts with some black paint, but the clamp fixings need to be stainless. It's nearly time to fit the edging to the board. I haven't rubbed the board down yet, and according to the steel rule, the width of the pieces of mahogany for around the edge need to be seven eighths of an inch. Or if you want the measurement in metric, two centimeters and a bit. And that concludes this video. The work is progressing. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.